guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use Backendless APIs to send out push notifications using push templates. In order to demonstrate this, I have uh, a mobile application running in an emulator. Uh, this is the same application that I have used in a few other videos that I dedicated to the topic of push notifications. What this application does is nothing just but registering the app and the device with Backendless. Once it is registered, that's all it takes to start receiving push notifications. So there's really no other functionality here than to demonstrate that push notifications arrive and what they look like. In order to assist me with push notifications, I created the push template, which is available on the messaging screen. And here we switch to push notifications. Under push templates, there is a saved template, or you can create a new one. It doesn't really matter here. I already have one which uses some smart text. And uh, uh, to review, it's just going to send out a greeting to a user uh, using the user's name and the city. The, uh, this delivery is segmented. It's going to be delivered to all users that are from Dallas. And in my application, there's only one user that is me that happens to be in Dallas. The push templates screen, which lists all push templates, for every single push template provides a way to show the code that can be used to deliver push notifications using that specific template. When you click this icon right here, you see the tooltip says show code. You click on it and you get a code viewer, viewer that has multiple tabs for different languages. For this demonstration, I will use JavaScript. And this is the line of code that is needed to deliver a push notification using the push mission template. So this code is, as you can see, is as simple as it gets, backendless.messaging.push with template, and you specify the name of the template. I also put together a sample application using JavaScript, and for this, I used a site called JS Fiddle. And as you can see right here, I'll walk you through what's going on. Uh, in here, I have the, uh, a line of code that imports the JavaScript library. This, this is the line. And this line number, number two is just a div that contains uh, an ID. And I'm going to be outputting any output that I have from this application into this div, just so we can have the visual description. In fact, I already run it previously, and we have some output. Let me walk you through the code itself. So number one, we initialize the application with the application ID and the API key. And in here, as you can see, this is the line of code or a few lines of code that I have copied from Backendless Console that sends out a push notification using this template. There are two callbacks. One of them is when the push notification is successful and it has been scheduled for delivery because with backendless push notifications, they go out asynchronously. So backendless receives that request, puts it in the queue, and then as quickly as possible sends out the notifications to all the devices. In case if there is an error, the catch method uh, or the catch uh, construct of this promise is executed and there is a function uh, th that is executed if there is an error. In both cases, I use the function called log that I put together here. And as you can see in here, we just obtain this little div and then update its contents with whatever the message is. So very, very straightforward code. Let me bring in the, uh, the emulator. So right now there are no notifications. And uh, what I will do is I will just make this window a little bit smaller just so I can fit both the emulator and the code in JavaScript. So in here, let's just click run. So it is executed and in my emulator, the, pr the push notification should be arriving any moment now. Sometimes it takes longer. It really depends on how fast the Google servers are also executing. So now we have the push notification. As you can see, it has arrived and the content is exactly as the push notification is configured. So it uses the personalization because it knows that this is my device. So it can substitute the values for my name and for my location. And you can repeat this process as many times as you want. So you set it out again and here it is. So very, very straightforward and perhaps the simplest way to send out push notifications that are highly customizable, both with textual content and with graphical content, because using the, using the templates, you can customize pretty much every single aspect of a push notification. I hope you find this useful. Uh, definitely give it a try if you, if you 
uh, going to start using push notifications, consider using push templates. They provide maximum flexibility and convenience for delivering push notifications to your users. Thank you for watching this video and as always, happy coding.